Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to share with you a short clip that introduces one of my interviewees, Jim Cota. He is a retired environmental lawyer and now a wildlife photographer and he did work on behalf of the Park Service and he actually did work with Point Reyes National Seashore around the same time that tule elk were reintroduced to the area. For those who don't know, tule elk were hunted to the brink of extinction, so much so that there weren't any left in the area that we now know as Point Reyes National Seashore, so some were brought in to repopulate the area. My experience with the Park Service uh, was in the San Francisco office. I had originally worked in the Washington headquarters and done BLM work. So when I transferred to San Francisco, uh, Point Reyes and, and all the parks in the western region of the National Park Service were places that I did legal work for. In fact, one of the first things I did, the very first thing I did with respect to Point Reyes, I arrived uh, out here in 1977 and the next year the park was uh, putting, uh, was taking elk that uh, under uh, resolution of Congress directed the Park Service to take some elk and put them at Point Reyes. And the rancher who then was, had a permit to graze cattle at Pierce Point Ranch sued. And so I, uh, saw the, I got the lawsuit and uh, uh, met with the US, assistant U.S. attorney and we uh, defended the case in court and won. Uh, basically, the permit was not enforceable. I mean, permits by definition are, are merely uh, written uh, permission to do what otherwise could be given orally, and a permit, as opposed to a lease, is, all, is, is uh, cancelable or revocable uh, always, without any cause and without any uh, required notice. Uh, so, um, this? this was 1978, and uh, the Park Service took another year or two to get that rancher out of Pierce Point and his cattle. Meanwhile, the elk stayed fenced in, t in a, uh, an enclosure, fenced enclosure that they stayed in for, I think, uh, a year or two, but I'm not sure. You're talking about a much smaller enclosure, not the... Pierce no, this is not the 2,600 acres that we know of today where the elk are held there behind an eight foot tall fence. This was uh, an enclosure uh, that was, uh, I don't know, maybe a few acres, I don't know exactly, but it was just big enough to hold the elk. And uh, um, actually some of them became uh, ill during that period. And I'm not uh, uh, sure why, but I think it was related to the cattle having been there. Some of them developed Yone's disease and others had malformed antlers, which might have been related to the forage they were able to get or were being fed inside this small enclosure. They were, very, they were limited in their range use, and during that time of enclosure are when these problems developed, such as the Yoni's disease. Uh huh. Yeah, there were, there were 10 of them brought there, and I think uh, uh, a couple of them died before they were released. Uh, when the rancher finally left and they got use of the whole 2,600 acres. So when I look up Ewing's disease, it is described as something associated with animals, large numbers of animals, and confinement. That's exactly right. It's easily trans, it's transmitted most easily by animals that are confined close together. That's why it's more of a problem with dairy cattle or cows than it is beef cattle. I think that's about right. I know that when the elk were brought into Point Reyes, uh, the Park Service or someone did a determination of how many of the uh, herds at Point Reyes, and I think then there were uh, one or two more than now. But now there are six. I think there were seven in 1978, maybe even eight. And anyway, I know that uh, the Park Service, it's on the Park Service web website, um, shows that uh, I think 50% of the dairies at Point Reyes in 1978 had Yone's disease. That is to say, one or more of the cows in half the herds had Yone's disease.